The door to the basement lies level with the ground outside. The knob is held in place by a cable attached four feet up the wall. The cable is in tension with a load of 340 pounds. Express T in Cartesian form. First, let's draw a picture. Here's the wall and the ground with the door on it. The door is five feet wide. The cable is attached four feet up the side of the house. The tension goes from the door to the wall. The tension is pulling on the door, otherwise the door would fall into the basement. So here is our vector. We need to find T in Cartesian form. This is a case where your vector is given in terms of magnitude along a line. There are three different ways a mag force can be written down. The first is a magnitude in a known direction. We don't have any angles. The second is in Cartesian form. Well, that's where we want to get to. And the third is magnitude along a line. To find a vector in terms of Cartesian form from the magnitude along a line, the first step is to find the position vector of the line. Now, without looking at where the force is, let's look at the geometry of the problem. I have some x and y axes system, and I have two points along that line. I want to find out what this line is. It goes in five feet and four feet. So my two Cartesian points are five, zero, and zero, four. Notice T is not on this picture. This is a geometry picture where I have distances. If you put T along the hypotenuse, you have mixed up your units because T is in units of pounds. But in the geometry, you can look at these two points. To find a position vector, you have two minus from. We are going to zero, four from five, zero. So we're going to say zero minus five I plus four minus zero J. Two mi now make sure you stop and think, are we going in the right direction? We're going in the negative I, positive J direction. Positive J means we're going up, which is good because T is going up. That's our position vector. The second step is to find the unit vector along that same line. To find the unit vector, we want to take the position vector and divide it by its length. The vector r does not have length 1. If it did, we'd be all set, but we can check that. The length of the vector r is the square root of its component squared, 5 squared plus 4 squared. Well, if you multiply that out, that's 6.4031. That is not equal to 1. So we need to make this vector into a unit vector. To find the unit vector along that same line, take the vector r and divide it by its length. So what we're going to do is we're going to say minus 5 over 6.4031i plus 4 over 6.4031j. Now this is a unit vector, and you should always plug out, pull out your calculator and make sure that it is in fact a unit vector. This is equal to negative 0 0.78087i plus 0.624695j. Now, the position vector of r is given in feet, units of feet. We need a vector that's given in units of pounds. Once we've divided by its magnitude, the vector u is unitless. It is all just numbers and direction. What we want to do is multiply this unit vector by our 340 pounds to get the vector we're actually looking for. When you multiply that out, you get minus 265i plus 212j pounds. Does this make sense? You always have to stop and ask yourself, are we on the right track here? Is it possible that this force vector that had components of 265i in the negative i direction and 212j, is this possibly going to give me a vector of 340 pounds? And yes, that makes some sense. That would be correct. Our units work out. I have tension in terms of pounds, which is good. And we're all done.